the purpose of this tutorial is to discuss uh, performance of confined masonry buildings in earthquakes and to explain how um, um, confined masonry building um, is damaged and uh, why it happens and um, why uh, it has a good earthquake behavior. Um, confined masonry as a construction technology was uh, first um, identified after a major earthquake in Italy. In 1907, there was a, a Messina earthquake with, where 70,000 people died. And uh, in that area, um, uh, some confined masonry buildings were uh, found that performed really well uh, and uh, didn't collapse, unlike many other buildings. Uh, after that, the, this construction technology was found in Latin America in 1930s, particularly in Chile and Colombia, and uh, since 1940s, um, this system has been practiced in uh, Mexico and other Latin American countries, and also in European countries, uh, in the Middle East, Iran, and Indonesia, and China. Um, in uh, Confined masonry uh, tends to be used in uh, um, areas and in countries where, uh, with high earthquake risk. Uh, for example, uh, this building um, was, uh, was um, exposed to 2007 earthquake, Pisco earthquake in Peru. And it is, uh, as you can see, a G plus uh, 4 building, um, pretty uh, tall. It was confined masonry building. And it was uh, not damaged in the earthquake, remained undamaged whereas the, the surrounding um, masonry buildings, unreinforced masonry building, collapsed. Um, in other countries, too, uh, confined masonry was, was used and exposed to earthquakes. For example, Mexico is one of the countries where confined masonry has been used extensively for uh, low to medium rise construction. And uh, it performed well in uh, uh, most uh, or all earthquakes. Some damage was, um, was uh, observed in earthquakes that were of uh, high uh, intensity and magnitude. For example, in 1999, there was Ox Osaka uh, earthquake of magnitude 7.5, where confined masonry buildings were um, damaged. As you can see, damage of um, uh, masonry walls, this confining element was not uh, placed at the opening locations, and that is one of the reasons for the damage. However, uh, buildings um, didn't collapse and uh, um, human lives were saved thanks to uh, confined masonry construction. It is important to understand how confined masonry buildings uh, behave and uh, how do they get damaged in an earthquake. Let us consider a confined masonry panel which consists of, uh, a, of a masonry wall and uh, confining uh, tie columns and uh, a tie beam. So uh, under, when subjected to uh, lateral earthquake loading or ground shaking, which, which is equivalent to this loading, uh, initially masonry wall cracks develops so-called diagonal inclined cracks, which are due to uh, shearing force uh, caused by an earthquake. This is so-called phase one of the behavior um, of a confined masonry uh, panel. Later on, uh, or uh, during an earthquake, uh, ground shaking uh, intensity may increase and um, the, the cracks that initially developed in a, in a panel can propagate and uh, they start, um, at that stage, cracking starts in confining uh, elements, particularly tie columns, at the top and the bottom of each panel. And uh, that is phase two of a behavior, and at that phase, uh, that stage, the confining masonry, confined masonry panel has achieved the maximum strength. Uh, if uh, earthquake ground shaking uh, increases in intensity, um, the cracks further propagate through uh, confined masonry um, tie columns, uh, and, um, and at the end, uh, shearing complete failure of tie column uh, may take place. This, this is stage three or failure of a confined masonry panel. When we put together this on a, a diagram where vertical axis shows uh, a lateral seismic load and uh, horizontal axis show displacements uh, caused by this, um, caused by the, by the earthquake where a uh, panel gets damaged, so these are displacements, uh, we can see that there are three distinct points. Point one, 
corresponds to, uh, to stage one of the behavior. Point two corresponds to stage two of the behavior. And point three corresponds to final stage, which is failure. Um, for structural design or seismic design of confined masonry, uh, most codes, design codes, use a phase one, uh, which is corresponding to cracking in masonry walls. However, uh, there is a significant reserve uh, in uh, margin of safety associated with further uh, confine, food, further behavior, and uh, uh, which is associated with the damage in confining elements. Which, uh, which occurs before the failure. So confining elements provide this additional safety along this range and additional displacement ability of a masonry building to get damage and um, subject uh, experience displacements before it actually uh, fails. And that is um, additional safety margin is specific for confined masonry buildings. In general, confined masonry buildings perform very well in earthquakes and the very few collapses or severe damage to these buildings have been observed in past earthquakes. However, um, um, in the severe damaging earthquakes, um, there were some um, typical damage patterns uh, observed in uh, confined masonry buildings. For example, in 2010, Maule, Chile earthquake, um, it was magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake which struck uh, Chile on uh, February 27, 2010, uh, and affected 50% of the population of uh, Chile. Uh, 521 uh, people died. Um, at the same time, um, there were um, um, earthquakes happened in Haiti uh, in, in January 2010, and uh, it was magnitude 7 earthquake, and 300,000 people died. Uh, a very low uh, fatalities in uh, in the Chile earthquake uh, can be attributed to uh, to well well constructed confined masonry construction where people uh, live. This is an example of a uh, house uh, uh, confined masonry uh, house. It's a bungalow uh, G plus one uh, where uh, the be the walls suffer damage and uh, cracks can be observed. It was a stage one damage as discussed in the previous uh, slide diagram. Uh, however, uh, the building remained occupied. This, was, this photograph was taken three months after the earthquake and the repairs were underway. Uh, in, on another uh, example of another building in the same uh, region, uh, it was a G plus uh, two apartment building. Um, you can see that besides the cracks in the walls, these were uh, concrete block walls, uh, there were also uh, extensive. There was also extensive damage in reinforced concrete tie columns, and um, practically uh, they failed. It was phase three of uh, behavior. However, the building didn't collapse. It was damaged, but uh, it remained standing. Um, it was close to the epicenter of this magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquakes. Um, in conclusion, uh, confined masonry has been studied extensively and researched. Um, uh, uh, through various uh, studies and uh, was tested in many, many earthquakes. This tutorial has presented um, some examples of earthquake performance of confined masonry buildings and also um, the, uh, this explained uh, mechanism or, uh, of behavior of a confined masonry uh, buildings in uh, past earthquakes.